Welcome. This is the Jenkins User Experience SIG, April 24th, 2024. Topics for today include the next LTS baseline, recent UI improvement activities, including uh, recent changes in, LT in core, uh, nothing that I need to add on recently merged, active work that's pending in core, and then a discussion topic on linting for jelly files were all the ones I had put. Are there any topics you would like to see added to this agenda? I've got a couple. Um, one on uh, Jenkins.io. Um, it's like a kind of refreshed docs. Um, and then there's one, which is like an amalgamation of the um, active work, just what a demo, uh, what I've been working on recently. Good. All right. So Jan, are you okay if I put the two right there? Yeah, that's great. All right, any other agenda topics that need to be added? Okay, then let's go ahead. We're gonna run the agenda then. So by way of information, 2.452 has been selected as the next LTS baseline. Thanks to Alex Brandis for acting as release lead and to Kevin Martins for doing the change log and upgrade guide. Release candidate is scheduled for next week. May 1st, and some of the key changes in the UI are listed here. So thanks to Alex for removing the material icons, and thanks to Marcus Winter for his work on the progress bar, for Daniel Beck on removing the people view, and I think this one was from Marcus. So thanks very much to all those involved. Any questions on 2.452? Okay, the next, let's talk about Jenkins.io improvements. Jan, do you want to share your screen for this one or what, how would you like to do it? Yeah, no, I'll um, share my screen. Um, okay. I've just installed Zoom, so just like bear with if it doesn't uh, go swimmingly. Um, da -ba -da -ba -da. Okay, oh. give me a sec. Uh, let's see. Um, it's telling me to restart Zoom, but hopefully I can all that. And, and no, you'll probably have to restart. At least that's been the experience I've heard of on Mac, is in order <laughs> to grant permissions, you have to exit and come back. We'll wait for you. All right, it's good. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, see it just great. Marvelous. Cool. Um, so yeah, um, recently been doing some work on Jenkins.io, um, just going to give it a spring cleaning. Um, so recently... Uh, looked at the downloads page that's recently been merged. Um, got some work on the dark mode, which is up for review now. Um, apart from that, I've been looking at the docs page, um, seeing if there's any work or any way of kind of tidying them up. Um, it's just like an appearance change. Um, there's no actual structural changes to this. Um, but just looking to face, can we make it easier to read and easy to navigate, right? So... Um, if I just give a quick run through of what we've got, um, let me shrink that. Um, this is like the Docker page. If I open up, oh, blimey. Open up the existing one just as a comparison. Oh, of course, um, things being very slow. Being terribly. Uh, let me move that out of the way. Okay. Um, if I drag that down there, right, so you can see the existing Docker page. Um, kind of a few issues I had with it was kind of the table of contents, it's kind of pushing in the contents, kind of not making it very easy to read. Um, not making kind of effective use of my kind of screen, right? I've got these kind of large whiteboards on the side. Um, maybe the table of contents could shift there uh, to make better use of that space. Um, and then on the left side, you've kind of got these like, kind of long list of items. Um, it just turns into like sea of blue. Um, just kind of exploring options if we can improve that. So I pop open the kind of the change. Um, table of contents now lives on the far right, kind of making better use of the uh, screen, right? Um, the actual main contents of the uh, documentation, it's no longer squished or indented. Um, and then the navigation on the far left, um, it's kind of got a more active um, active state. Um, so it's kind of clearer to see what article you're on, for example. 
Um, previously, every page has this kind of item right at the bottom. Obviously, it's not loading right now, but in the footer, you've got this like improve this page button, um, which is great, um, but it's not very visible. So just for this, I've kind of bumped it right to the very top. So every kind of article page you'll see right at the top, you as a contributor can just jump in um, to make contributions. To kind of encourage people to, to contribute, right? Um, and then if we scroll down, um, again, largely just UI changes, but um, nothing structural and new pagination controls. Um, previously, we had kind of two copies of them, one at the top, one at the bottom. Figured just for kind of simplicity's sake, let's keep it in the same space at the bottom. Um, looks just like that. Um, follows the same pattern as the build history and the blog pagination, right? So a bit of consistency there, which is nice. Um, and that's that's the docs changes. Um, anyone have any comments or thoughts? I, so I like that very much. So when you move the table of contents into a true right-hand column, does that, mm -hmm. does that then cause it also to somehow lay out radically differently when you're on a smaller screen? Um, if I, I can't actually shrink this. Okay. Um, if I try and resize it. You'll see that it no, no need to show it. You can just, you can okay. just tell me, Jan, I trust you. Yeah. You, you just say, yes, Mark, <laughs> it does that or no, it doesn't. Um, wrong. See, on smaller screen sizes, it'll just disappear. Like ah, so. Okay. All right. So and it, it, it like goes tablet. away. It goes away completely. It doesn't. Yes. It doesn't. Place um, itself on top or something. No, nothing like that. Um, nice. Might be an idea to have like a button to pull it back in if you need to, but at the same time, it might just be faster just to scroll at that point. Right. I don't know. Um, and yeah, if we shift like a mobile view, to close that. Um, you see, it just kind of it's just sits gone. On top. Great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thanks very cool. much. Yeah. Yeah. I'm um, uh, so the dark mode. You're showing it in dark mode, but the site yeah. doesn't currently render in dark mode real well. So were the dark mode changes you had to do? Uh, particularly invasive? Um, no. So I think over the last year since the blog change, um, slowly been adopting more CSS variables throughout the place. So um, by and large, it's just a change of those variables. So change it in one spot and the entire site will reflect those changes. Great. Thank Anything you. else on, on docs? Awesome. So it, it looks great to me. Thank you very much. I assume we continue reviewing it. Now we've got a pending project from Google Summer of Code 2023 that will mm -hmm. eventually switch us to version docs. But I assume that that will, that because you're not changing structure, you're changing presentation, right? And so yeah. that that's your work should not harm their work on getting us to eventually have version docs as presented by Antora. Great, thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Stop sharing. And I think next was you wanted to do a demo. Would you want to just go ahead and share at that? Yeah, sure. Um, let me just find the share button again. All right. You see my screen? Yes. Cool. Should see a Safari window. Yeah, um, not not right. so freestyle project. <laughs> um, so this is. Again, it's an amalgamation of, of various things I've been kind of working on. Um, so just, just to highlight a few on this page, you've got the new builds widget, um, which is a rewrite of the existing widget, um, also a bit subtle redesign to it. Um, that's up for review now. Um, it's so far so good, I think. Um, main changes apart from visual, um, we had some RSS links right at the bottom probably not so commonly used, so they've just been shifted into a little drop down, um, makes it less prominent. Um, uh, builds are now grouped uh, by date. So previously we would show the date on each item, um, which would kind of clutter each item. So by grouping them, it's a bit more space to breathe. Um, previously, if you hovered over a build, you'd get a little chevron that would slide out. 
Um, once to do away with that and have this kind of always present button. So it's always in the same spot for every build. Um, and it also makes it easier for touch users if there kind of are any, right? Um, and then kind of small one. Um, previously, there was kind of lots of JavaScript um, to handle the layout of each item, right? So depending on how many um, actions or badges you might have, depending on description size, title size, there'd be some JavaScript that would dictate kind of where everything sat. Um, and that was really complicated to deal with. Um, so as part of this, I've moved that just to be CSS only, um, just through like using stuff like flex boxes or grids, um, stuff that wasn't doable kind of when this was written originally, right? So um, that simplified a lot of the stuff and it's cut down a lot of JavaScript, which is nice. Right. Um, then we have a kind of sidebar. One of the intentions was to reduce the items in the sidebar, right? So um, moved a lot of the kind of clickable actions to the app bar right over here. Um, this is quite a big change, um, not in, just in terms of like UI, but also implementation, right? So we need a, we need a way that plugins can integrate with it easily as well. Um, so I've been writing a proposal for this um, and I'll probably share it once it's kind of closer to being finalized. Um, it takes the existing kind of action API in Jenkins um, and adds to it, right? So actions can now have colors, um, kind of iconography. They can be grouped, for example. Um, they can execute JavaScript, for example. They can call dialogues. So it's like one standardized API for doing everything an action might want to do, right? Um, that's what that looks like. Um, from a user's perspective, it's just stuff from the left, move to the right. But from a developer's perspective, it's hopefully a lot easier and a lot more consistent to, to write these. Um, so they John, have one API you, to do that. Do, do you want questions during your demo or do you want them, do you um, want us to hold the questions? I think go for it, yeah. Because I assume Uli is going to ask a question because <laughs> his he adds a number of things on the left hand side for for coverage mm -hmm. reporting etc. Uli, yeah. did you have a question? Yes, uh, but not about the coverage. But oh. uh, there are still two buttons uh, below the add description and disable projects. Uh, is the plan to move them up as well, or yeah, okay. um, the plan would be just to maybe shift those into the overflow or. Um... Maybe remove them, I don't know. But yeah, um, just have one row of buttons that are all standardized. Okay, yeah. that's and that's very attractive because now you've just purchased, you've just given us more vertical space. You have mm -hmm. bought us vertical space by getting rid of add description and disable project. Those are low use, at least for me. So very low value compared to the content that's presented and towards the left center of the page. Good, thanks. Um, and as oh, for like one... the, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, it was just a very small question from uh, the build widget on the left. Are the texts like deployed to dev just the description that are written, or did you introduce anything um, fancy? No, that's there? just just a just a description. Yeah, nothing fancy oh. there. Um, okay, but yeah, I'll go back to that. Yeah, later. Um, so yeah, just a standard description. Um, so yeah, um, idea is just shift the controls to the top right um, and also group them and kind of order them by importance. So as a user, I'm quite likely to hit build now, for example, kind of there's a far higher chance of me doing that than it is of me hitting rename, for example, um, or embeddable build status. Um, I might do it once in a while, but chances are- Hardly ever. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's deprioritize those, right? Um, so that's that. Um, so it's a new API largely to do that. Um, builds on what we've got currently, and I'll hopefully have a proposal out within a week, which would, right? Um, then there's the kind of command palette, which has been in kind of review for, I don't know, just over a year, which is entirely my fault. Um, but it's a new search UI, um, and hopefully a new uh, way of making search more powerful and useful in Jenkins, right? Um, so currently it's, it's very bare bones, but hopefully once this is in, we can kind of iterate on it and make search more useful. So if I just 
search for a project. Currently, again, it's just what we have currently, but in a new UI, in the future, we might group items or highlight more important information like, you know, what they belong to, different iconography, um, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that's up for review. Um, I just, there's a comment by Daniel Beck on it uh, that I might need some help with um, regarding uh, java -y stuff, which isn't my strong point, especially on the Jenkins project. So yeah, I might need a hand there if anyone's uh, good in that domain. Cool. Is uh, a question to this a search bar. Is the search bar uh, local to the selected project or is it uh, globally over Jenkins? Yeah, just it's a global search bar now, so it's not um, tied to the current page. Cool. Um, and the very last thing is um, very much a, a work in progress idea, but um, rather than having kind of items on the far left, um, if we can elevate those out of that sidebar, um, it'll be easier for users and hopefully faster, right? So. This is a basic build, um, but you'll notice there's no, no longer a console output on the far left. We now have this kind of interactive widget um, and it kind of builds on the card widget introduced with the build status, uh, but it's been customized slightly. So open up a job, you can access your console kind of instantly. Um, you've got some additional controls in the top right, such as download, we also have this expand button if you want to see the kind of full log. Um, very much a work in progress. Um, but if I click expand, it'll fill the screen um, and I can see my full log like so. Um, yeah, that very, very rough at the moment. Um, but I just thought I'd show an example of what that might look like. So on that one, I worry that, for instance, I deal with a particular job, the Jenkins plugin bill of materials that has literally megabytes of console log you won't does this attempt to read the entire log into that into that page it, it or it's some subset it's it's yeah, doing it's a, subset. a subset okay yeah great. um so yeah do being you could expand that if you want the full log um okay so it's it's not going to pause to download 20 or 40 megabytes of log file from the jenkins bill of materials just to satisfy presenting this yeah. page okay yeah. great cool um so that's that if anyone has any questions or anything let me know this looks brilliant jan this really cool. does look brilliant thank you awesome. thank you um yeah i'll stop sharing that's it cheers all right then let's let's look towards the next part of the agenda then and uh you should see my copy of the agenda Okay, so items, Uli, last time we met, you had talked about the data table plugins upgrade to 2.x. Is there anything additional you wanted to share this time? No, I think it's just finished. <laughs> okay. Uh, move this point from the agenda, I think. Great. Thanks. All right. Then I had some items to just highlight and remind people in terms of what's recently been merged. Uh, the new item page has been has been updated. It's got an entirely new look, and and the okay entirely new look is maybe a little too bold, right? Here's how it used to look. Here's how it now looks. So it it looks better. It navigates better. This will not be in two point four fifty two. It's not in the next LTS. This first appeared in four fifty three. So we won't see it in an LTS for about three months. But nice, nice work. Jan, I think this was your work. Yes, it was. Thank you very, very much. I, I like the, the look and the feel. Then, then Marcus Winter did work on getting symbols managed at the proper level. Uh, and not much to show there, just it's a, it's a code structure thing. Style of alerts. This one, again, Jan, this is some of your work to show before it looked like this and now we've got a better look mm -hmm. anything you yeah, want to highlight there jan um yeah it's a, it's a really small one um but we're just using the kind of palette that jenkins provides right the color palette um rather than having these kind of hard-coded colors um so this will also work with dark mode as well 
um and annoyingly in dark mode you'd have these like blinding blindingly bright alerts um so that was the main reason for this change was just to turn those down a little bit um but also standardize it so, yeah thank you thanks very much and then uh, oh go ahead question. uli uh does this change also cover the uh the yeah the anime yeah i don't know how to call it when you restart jenkins we also have a kind of uh, box which now says that it's safe that Jenkins restarting and this box uh, looks a little bit strange from colors and mm -hmm. from you know, size it uh, has no rounded corner corners I think when you restart yeah. Jenkins you see this box is this also covered by this change or is this a different thing um I'm not too sure to be honest I'll have to double check um <laughs> But I'll I'll take a look after this. Just to be sure, is this the one you're referring to? No, after one after you're starting Jenkins, uh, there is ah. the Jenkins coming, and then we have a green. In my instance, at least, we have now a green box that says that Jenkins is safe to restart, and that the agents will continue to run. And this box uh, looks a little bit out of uh, design, let's say so. It it has uh, not rounded corners. It has uh, yeah the old style corners. Hmm. So maybe this one has forgotten to use the correct CSS rules. Okay. Yeah. So Uli, would you be willing to to share the path you use to get to that, so that then at least it can be investigated? I, I'm I'm not even sure how to get to that dialogue, and and that it's just restart Jenkins and then we have the Jenkins image and below the Jenkins image we have this box okay so so I'm used to doing prepare for shutdown but that I don't think is what you're talking no, about no when you restart so you need to do an actual restart I'm not sure if you want to do it and now. I'm used to doing that with either safe restart or restart in the URL I've, I've just restarted my instance, um, and it's still oh. the square. Um, oh, okay. Restart, so you've so seen yeah. it. Good. Okay. Yeah, so, I've just got so it. Mark's got it ineptitude yeah. has been fixed. Jan found it. Very good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll raise a PR to fix that. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. All right. So that one, and then the next was let's see badges appearance. Yep. So the uh, the alert merge broke the badges um, as they were using the same class. So um, just fixed that and separated ah. the classes. Okay. So this was this was a, more of a fix than anything. And so the the new yep. result looks like this. Great. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And you already on the active work, you already showed us rewrite the build history and move the console output. Uh, mm -hmm. I think Tim Jacome had prepared one on improving plugin manager search. Uh, nothing that I need to particularly show there. Then this remove executors widget for non-admin users. I think this was initiated by Daniel Beck, wasn't it? No, by Tim. Okay, so Tim noted and Daniel's been actively involved that, hey, this executor widget that we've had for the longest time isn't terribly useful to a typical user of Jenkins. Okay, great. And then Jan, you had one on more flexible layouts. I think this one is a long-term one. Is there anything we need to discuss on this one? Um, no, no, I just need Daniel to take a look at it, I think. Um, okay. It's a little bit. Great. That covered all of the UI improvements I was aware of. Anyone else have items they wanted to highlight here today? Okay, then Jan, you had raised this PR about jelly linting. Mm -hmm. And I think the discussion has gone kind of quiet. We could consider discussing it here if you'd like, or just allow it to continue in the pull request. Do you have a preference? I think, yeah, just continuing the pull request. Um, Great. I'm slowly just updating it um, just to hopefully get it working, but still not too sure if it actually will work. We'll see. Okay, great. Any other topics from anyone for today's meeting? All right. Thanks for your time today. Thanks very much. Thanks.